Hey everyone, greetings from Dr. Prepper. Another week, another question. Some more topics for us to discuss, some more concepts for us to go through, and a few steps closer towards getting you that neat PG seat. So let's look at today's question and let's discuss that topic. So the question I want to discuss with you guys today is which of these do not drain into the middle meatus of the nose? The options being posterior ethmoidal sinus, middle ethmoidal sinus, anterior ethmoidal sinus, and maxillary sinus. So you may think that since three of them are ethmoidal sinus and the maxillary sinus is standing out as a different uh, in appearance, you might want to tick that. But actually the correct option is A, which is posterior ethmoidal sinus. So how did we arrive at this answer? Let's, let's find out. So the topic we're looking at today is paranasal sinuses. And uh, a lot of questions can come from little, little, small, small details about paranasal sinuses. So let's uh, look at uh, the topic in whatever brief amount of detail we can. So what are paranasal sinuses? They are invaginations of the nasal cavity into the surrounding facial bones. That's the simplest explanation of paranasal sinuses. So what is their function? They make the skull lighter and also add resonance to an individual's voice. So what is the epithelium that lines the paranasal sinuses? Uh, the epithelium that lines is actually respiratory epithelium, which is pseudocolumnar ciliated epithelium. So you might get a question saying what is the epithelium and the option can have respiratory epithelium or pseudocolumnar ciliated epithelium, which is also the right answer. So remember that mostly in the paranasal sinuses, mucus is produced and uh, cycled. So what kind of cells produce these mucus cells? Uh, they are goblet cells. So goblet cells within the epithelium of uh, lining the paranasal sinuses are what are responsible for the mucus production. So how many paranasal sinuses are there? So paranasal sinuses are basically four, which are the maxillary, frontal, sphenoid and ethmoidal. The ethmoidal sinuses are further divided anatomically into posterior, middle and anterior. So those are the kind of paranasal sinuses. Let's, let's look at each of them in detail starting with the maxillary sinus. So I'm going to go through each uh, type of paranasal sinuses and uh, just look at the pearls or the important points from which questions can come rather than going into detail of each and hopefully try to cover as much as possible. So I'm going to skip things like nerve supply and blood supply because you rarely get questions from there. And I'm actually going to focus on what multiple choice questions can come from. So coming to the maxillary sinus, you have to remember this is the largest sinus. Uh, it's the biggest in size. It is within the maxilla bone of, uh, as you know, maxilla is one of the facial bones. It's like, it's the one that forms your cheek. Uh, there are one on each side and they are paired and they are almost symmetrical. Shape-wise, they are pyramidal in shape and each sinus is very important to know where they drain into. So the maxillary sinus drains into the middle meatus of the nose through something called a semilunar hiatus. We will look at it in detail later. So one thing again you have to remember is maxillary sinus is the only sinus that drains upwards. It drains anti-gravity. Therefore, this pseudo ciliated epithelium plays an important role in draining the sinus. All other sinuses can drain with the help of gravity, but maxillary sinus is the only sinus which drains upwards. So again, another important salient feature to know about maxillary sinuses. So let's look at the relations of the paranasal sinuses and the first sinus being the maxillary sinus. So the maxillary sinus, as we told you, is a pyramidal in shape. So as you can see, roughly corresponds to a pyramid. So this medial wall is formed by the nasal cavity. The superior relation of the roof of the pyramid is formed by the orbit and this infraorbital nerve that is here. The floor is formed by the alveolus of the maxilla. As you can see, it's a large sinus. It's paired. It's there on both sides. So these are the relations of the maxillary sinus. And also, as you can see, the ostium is here on top. So this is the only sinus that drains upward. So how it flows is it flows this way. Mucus circulates throughout the sinus and then drains on the top. So it is anti-gravity drainage for the maxillary sinus. Very important to know. So coming to our next sinus of discussion is the frontal sinus. It is within the frontal bone. Again, there are one on each side, but these are not symmetrical. They are variable in size. Even the septum in dividing them can be irregular. It could also lead to absence of sinus on one side. It is triangular in shape with the apex pointing, pointing downwards. So it sort of looks, it can look like that. So this drains into the frontal recess of the middle meatus via the frontonasal duct. 
So again, this is another sinus that drains into the middle meatus. Let's look at the relations of the frontal sinus. So coming to the relations of the frontal sinus, I have given you a coronal section and a sagittal section. So here the frontal sinus as we discussed is triangular in shape. In this picture it's very symmetric but actually this uh, middle septum can be very irregular and therefore it can, uh, they are not exactly symmetrical but they are paired sinuses. Uh, if you see here is the frontal sinus within the frontal bone in the sagittal section. So easier to understand relations, uh, anteriorly there is the forehead and the nasociliary arches. Uh, posteriorly and superiorly there is the anterior cranial fossa and all its contents um, and inferiorly is the orbit. So with the help of these two pictures you can very easily understand the relations of the frontal sinus. Frontal sinus ostium is here at the bottom and therefore it has gravity assisted drainage. So now let's look at some of the relations of the sphenoidal sinus and some of the features about it. The sphenoid sinus is within the sphenoid bone. As you know, sphenoid bone is a wing-shaped bone in the middle of the floor of the uh, cranium. It's part of the skull. Uh, these are also again paired but not symmetrical, divided by an irregular septum just like the frontal sinuses. It drains into the sphenoethmoidal recess which is actually not part of any of the meatus. So if you get a question saying which of these sinuses does not drain into any meatus, the answer would be sphenoid sinus because it drains into the sphenoethmoidal recess. You must also remember that it is not seen on a routine radiograph. If you just do a radiograph of the skull, you should be able to see all the other sinuses but you will not see a sphenoidal sinus. So where you can see the sphenoidal sinus, we will discuss when you come to radiology. So coming to the relations of the sphenoid sinus, so the sphenoid sinus as you know is paired, so there will be one more sphenoid sinus here from the opposite side. This septum is again very irregular, so it's paired sinuses, but again not symmetrical. So the most important relation as you know forward is the orbit uh, and the other facial bones, posteriorly is the posterior cranial fossa and its contents. But medially is the other sphenoid sinus, but laterally, laterally is the most important relations of the sphenoidal sinus. So in the rare case you have infection of the sphenoid sinus, it's very risky because right lateral to this, uh, to the wall of the sphenoid bone is the cavernous sinus. So the cavernous sinus, you know, within its, within its substance carries the internal carotid artery and in the lateral wall it has these nerves which are the oculomotor nerve. The trochlear nerve, the ophthalmic nerve and the maxillary nerve remembered by the mnemonic OTOM, O-T-O-M and it also has the abducent nerve within its substance. So any of these structures can get affected if there's any uh, infection of the sphenoidal sinus breaching laterally. So these lateral relations of the sphenoidal sinus which is the cavernous sinus and all its contents are very important to know and remember if by some reason infection spreads to this, it can be very risky because the infection can spread to the cavernous sinus. So these lateral relations are very important to remember. So coming to last but not the least comes to ethmoidal sinus. So as you know the ethmoidal sinus is a flat bone that is found at the, is found at the uh, roof of the nose. It has something called a cribriform plate which is a thin walled bony honeycomb like spaces are there in the cribriform plate. You can know it has many small holes in it. So these consist of ethmoidal air cells which cumulatively form the ethmoidal sinus. So the ethmoidal air cells are divided into anterior, middle and posterior ethmoidal air cells and all the drainages are separate. So you must remember that the anterior and middle ethmoidal air cells drain into the middle meatus but the posterior ethmoidal air cell drains into the superior meatus. So this brings us to the answer of our question where you found, where it was asked that which of these do not drain into the middle meatus and the answer was the posterior ethmoidal air cell even though it seems and sounds similar to the anterior and middle and you would think they would drain into the middle meatus but it actually drains into the superior meatus and that's why that was the correct answer to our question. Let's look at the relations of the ethmoidal sinus. So coming to the ethmoidal sinuses, difficult to get an anatomical picture but this is a transverse section of a CT scan of the paranasal sinuses where it is showing you a transverse section through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. As, as you can see, the, these are the honeycomb spaces that we talked about. They are all irregular. You can call them as paired sinuses because technically they are present on both sides along the midline. So as you can see, there are anterior ethmoidal cells, posterior ethmoidal cells, there be middle ethmoidal cells. There is one of the largest cells that is called the agar nasi. So if someone asks you what is the agar nasi, it's basically one of the largest ethmoid air cells. Another question that can come for you. So this just helps you understand what the uh, ethmoid uh, air cells are. As you can see medially is the bridge of the nose, laterally is the orbit as a relation and uh, uh, superiorly will be the will be the cranial fossa uh, 
and inferiorly it just drains into the, the ostea and inferiorly and they drain into the different meatae which we have already discussed. So these are the relations of the ethmoidal air cells. So another very important aspect of knowing these paranasal sinuses is clinically you have to diagnose them. When you diagnose something related to paranasal sinus, you need to know what kind of imaging we do. So this is an image of the skull and uh, as I told you previously that uh, you cannot really see this phenoidal sinus in this image. You can appreciate the maxillary sinuses which I have traced out for you here and you can appreciate the frontal sinuses and you can kind of appreciate the ethmoidal sinuses also but you cannot really see the sphenoidal sinus. So in which view do you see the sphenoidal sinus? You see the sphenoidal sinus in a modified Waters view. So the view you are seeing right now in this image is the Waters view. So if you get a question saying which image, which of the following is the view used to uh, look at the paranasal sinuses, it is the Waters view. But if, you, if it says which of the following is used, to visualize the sphenoidal sinus, it will be the modified Waters view. So what is the modification? It is basically a Waters view with the mouth open. So when the mouth is open, it the X-ray beams pass through the mouth, through your palate and into your skull and you are able to visualize the sphenoid sinus. So very important for sphenoid sinus visualization, it needs to be a modified Waters view. So I've put up this picture just to show you what a modified Waters view looks like. So as you can see, this is the modified Waters view and as you can see because the mouth is open you can visualize the sphenoid sinus like I spoke about in the just now. So that's what you need to know modified Waters view for the sphenoid sinus. So like I just said you need to diagnose paranasal sinuses the most common pathology we diagnose is sinusitis. So how do you diagnose sinusitis? So the most important thing that you might get as a picture also as a question is the this x-ray might be there and you'd be like, what do you think this condition is? So you know it's a Waters view, which means it's related to the paranasal sinuses. So what you're looking for here is this. This is what we call an air fluid level. So anytime you see an air fluid level in the maxillary sinus, that is diagnostic of maxillary sinusitis. So that is why I have put up this image, maxillary sinusitis is diagnosed on a plane radiograph by up uh, by the presence of an air fluid level. You might not always get an air fluid level, you might get this sinus fully obliterated also. It's usually supposed to have only air, so it's supposed to be radio opaque like this, like how these frontal sinuses are. But if it's fully obliterated like how this lower half is, that means there is sinusitis present. So that is another way to diagnose if one of the sinuses is, is completely radio opaque now instead of being radio lucent. You can get similar images of CT scans also where you will find that uh, where it's supposed to be like air like in these frontal sinuses, the maxillary sinuses will be completely opacified and that is diagnostic of sinusitis. So now that we know how to diagnose sinusitis, let's look at sinusitis. So sinusitis of the paranasal sinuses can be of two types. It can be acute or chronic. Acute is when the symptoms last for about two weeks. Chronic is when they persist beyond one month. So then it becomes chronic sinusitis. The presenting complaints are usually congestion, discharge, facial pain and headaches sometimes. Uh, for treatment, acute sinusitis is often treatment with symptomatic management. It's usually treated as a common cold. However, if there is a secondary bacterial infection, it might require antibiotics. Chronic sinusitis, chronic sinusitis, I'm sorry, chronic sinusitis if bacteria will require antibiotics for a prolonged duration. If it's non-infectious or just inflammatory, steroids is the method of treatment. So these are some of the things that you need to know about sinusitis and it's obviously very important to look back at the x-rays and know how to diagnose one on seeing a plain radiograph. Let's look at some other pearls related to this topic now. So some other points from this topic that make for very good uh, objective questions are first is sinus headache. So a very important thing I want to tell you about sinus headache is as you know the frontal sinus is at the top and drains through gravity. Whereas the maxillary sinus drains upward when the patient is upright. So often by the type of headache or by the type of headache or the time of onset of symptoms. That can tell you which sinus is involved. So let me explain that. 
so if your frontal sinus is involved if your frontal sinus is involved your frontal sinusitis the whole day as you know you're walking around you're working so gravity is helping to assist so all the, the frontal sinus is draining all the excess fluid and the inflammatory fluid that is there but once you fall asleep and you're lying down everything collects in the frontal sinus so you wake up with a headache or you have an early morning headache on the other hand when you have maxillary sinusitis the whole day you're walking around the sinus drains upwards so all the fluid just keeps getting piled down in the maxillary sinus because it needs to go upwards so there's excess fluid so it's not draining adequately when you lie down and you sleep at night uh, when you become horizontal the sinus is assisted by gravity and it drains out so you have headache at the end of the day headache which is relieved when you wake up so they have opposite headache so if you can carefully elicit this history and understand when the patient is having headache and when he is having relief of the symptoms you can figure out whether his sinusitis is primarily in the frontal or the maxillary the next thing i talk about is inferior meatus so we talked about a lot of these sinuses draining into the superior or the middle meatus you know most of them drain into the middle meatus so what drains into the inferior meatus you may get a question like that also so the answer to that is in the inferior meatus what drains is the naso lacrimal duct another question for you to just answer the naso lacrimal duct drains in the middle meatus another thing is what is the ethmoidal bulla the ethmoidal bulla is basically a uh, if this is the nose and this is the superior meatus this is the middle meatus you will see there's a raised projection here that is called the ethmoidal bulla so what is it exactly sometimes you get a question from this also so the ethmoidal bulla is nothing but the middle ethmoid air cells they just have formed this impression on the middle wall of the middle meatus and that is why uh, they are named when you look at it from the nasal side they are seen as an ethmoidal bulla another very important thing we want need to know is which is the most common sinus to get sinusitis the answer to that is maxillary sinus maxillary sinus is the most common sinus to get infected and get sinusitis another important question or a one liner you can get asked so i want to leave you guys finally with this image which basically is a revision of where the sinuses drain because as far as i have seen most of the common questions that come is related to the drainage of these sinuses only so as you can see this is the superior meatus where only the posterior ethmoidal sinus is drained this is the semilunar and hiatus in the middle meatus where the frontal maxillary and anterior ethmoidal sinus is drained this is the ethmoidal bulla as you know it is an impression of the middle meatus of the middle ethmoidal sinus sorry so therefore the opening of the middle, middle ethmoid air cells are also in the ethmoid bulla the sphenoid sinus as you know is drains in the sphenoethmoidal recess not in any of the meatus this is the inferior meatus and as i said what drains in the inferior meatus is the nasolacrimal duct does not really show the opening of the posterior meatus but it is actually in the this superior meatus only this is the mid, this area is the middle meatus as you can see and an additional person is that the opening of the eustachian tube is also there however it's not any of the meatus it's in the it's actually in the nasopharynx that's where the eustachian tube opens so you might get a question from that also does the eustachian tube open in any of the in the superior middle or inferior meatus it doesn't it opens in the nasopharynx so to keep i want you to keep this image in your head to help you to understand where these sinuses drain that brings us to the end of today's discussion like the video if you found it helpful share it with others if you think they will benefit and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue benefiting from such discussions if there are any topics that you would like me to develop clinical questions about let me know in the comments so keep up the good work and all the best for your neat pg